call this meeting to order of the Lenore City Council for Tuesday, August the 4th, 2020. We welcome you here with us, those that are here with us, uh, council members that are with us, and uh, those that will be probably coming in later out, outside. Uh, and with those that are on the uh, uh, Zoom with us this evening, we uh, welcome everyone here. Uh, in a few minutes, uh, we will, uh, and a matter of fact, I think I'll go ahead before we do our moment of silence and our pledge and go ahead and let's call our roll uh, while we're here and get started with that. So if you will, please, I'll start with our council members here. Uh, council member Ben Willis is here. Council member David Stevens, uh, myself, uh, council member Ike Perkins, council member John Beal are here. Uh, council member Ralph Presswood, are you on? Okay, Council Member Chrissy, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Chrissy Thomas. Okay, and Council Member Todd Purdue. Yes, I'm here. Okay, thank you. Okay, then I'll call the re remainder. Our City Attorney uh, T.J. Rohr. I'm here. Thank you. Yes, sir. City Manager Scott Hildebrand. Present. Communications Director Joshua Harris. Present. Uh, Economic Development Main Street Director Kaylin Horn. Yeah. Finance Director Donna Bing. Present. Thank you. Uh, fire, our fire Chief Ken Hare. He is, he is here and outside. Thank you. Parks and Recreation Director Kenny Story. He, I see him. He's there. Okay, Kenny's here. Thank you. Planning Director Jenny Wheelock. I'm here. Thank you. Our police Chief Brent Phelps is here also. He's outside in the lobby. Our Public Utilities Director Radford Thomas. Here. Thank you. And our Public Works Director Jared Wright. He's outside. He's outside as well. Thank you. Okay. And Shirley Cannon, our City Clerk. Yes. Shirley's with us. Thank you. On that. And our, the news topic, uh, I'm not sure that um, Garrett is with us. Garrett, are you on? Yeah, I think he's, he's called in. Okay, thank you very much. All right, then. Well, we will go ahead and uh, uh, as we get started this evening, I'd like for you to continue uh, your prayers for our community uh, and everything that is going on. We still have a, a lot of uh, COVID-19 situations going on in our community. Uh, a lot of things are happening. Uh, several of our um, leaders across the community reached out to me this week and and wanted to be able to do anything they could to help and i said the best thing we can try to do right now is continue getting out information to uh to your people and your plants and your work uh places and across that as we get ready for school to start back in a few weeks to continue to to wear the, your mask to stay six feet apart Please continue to wash your hands and, and do everything you can to stay safe. That's the main thing that we can that we can tell everyone right now. And we will reach out into our community uh, all across, not only Lenore, but Caldwell County and ask those to continue to do so. Please stay safe as you can. And, and please be respectful of, of everyone around you. Uh, wearing a mask is not only for your own safety, but it's also for the safety uh, of those that you will come in contact with. So please do continue to do that. Let's do everything we can to work together to make our community as safe as we can. And we will continue to reach out in every way we possibly can to do those kind of things. So please keep that, that in your, your thoughts and prayers and, and help also pray for our leaders across our nation and our state and others. We pray for the communities uh, that uh, are going through, had the uh, hurricane situation, the tropical storm passed through down on our coast. We want to keep those people in our thoughts and prayers as well uh, as they're struggling with other things and now they have this on top of that. So all those things please keep in mind as we go now to our moment of silence and remain standing for our pledge. <clears throat> Thank you. Please salute the flag. 
I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Our first uh, order of business tonight is some special re recognition, and we will ask the uh, American Legion, Legion Post 29 members. Uh, I know we have, hope we have Wayne Mahalik, our commander from American Legion Post 29, and others tonight. They will honor and recognize our firefighter of the year and our police officer of the year. So as they uh, are getting ready to enter the our room, we will get ready for that, and we thank them for for coming and being a part of, of that with us this evening. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Very good. Thank you. You can't recognize me behind the mask, but I'm Herberto. <laughs> I'm a member of Post 29. Yes, sir. And I'm the historian. And with me today uh, uh, is my our post commander, uh, Wayne Mahillick. Carrying the goods. Get up on the microphone here. Get up on the microphone. Oh, well, we're, we're recording this, yeah. aren't we? OK. I should sing. All right. Uh, Wayne Mahillick, our post commander, who's going to make the presentation uh, to the fire chief, and the fire chief is going to make the presentation to uh, uh, Lieutenant Greer. Thank you. So Glad to have you, gentlemen, this evening. Thank you for uh, your recognition of our firefighter and our police officer of the year and uh, for what you guys do every day. We do appreciate it very much. Uh, Thank you. Enjoy working with you. It, it, it's our pleasure to be here, to be able to recognize someone in our community who is willing to stand up for everybody that's here and do what they need to do to protect us. And it's interesting in talking to uh, the lieutenant earlier, uh, he's also a Marine. And what I see a lot of times is people who have spent time in the military get out. There's nothing wrong with getting out after four years and going on to do something else or doing a career, but they always step forward and get involved in their communities. And what better to do than to continue in supporting with the fire department here. And it's a pleasure to provide this to uh, Lieutenant James S. Greer. He is the uh, 2000, or 2020 City of Lenore American Legion Post 29 Firefighter of the Year. Thank you very much for what you do and continuing on and uh, just keep on doing what you need to do to uh, support our community. Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Up here. Okay. You want to make some comments? You want to make some comments? Yeah, right about there. Back up a little bit. She doesn't want to make comments. Council, do you want to stand up? Or? Yeah, we can. Thank you. All right, we'll let. Can you get us <laughs> in the way we are? Because we didn't pull in. Yeah, I'm not sure yet. Uh, Y'all need to stand up here. Yeah, that's it. One, two, three. Got to smile. I'm smiling. Smile. <laughs> yeah, well, Mayor, put your mask on. That's bad for mask down. It's bad for TV. It's bad for TV. It's already. We already got it recorded. <laughs> Chief, yes, I do have a few uh, comments. Number if you one, would, we please are, thank you. We are absolutely grateful that the American Legion does this for our fire department and our police department each year, as well as the EMS through the county, which they, they did that yesterday or will do. Uh, we are so thankful for that, but it was absolutely our privilege to be able to nominate James, Lieutenant James Greer for this award this year. And it's, it's not really one thing that Lieutenant has done. Lieutenant is absolutely an integral part of our department. Uh, we've said many times that we pride ourselves on trying to be as most self-sufficient as we can. And it's because of personnel like him that we are able to do that. Uh, he has a background in electrical engineer and we use him a lot for that that saves our department in this city a lot of money. I hope and bless that y'all have rode by headquarters sometime at night while the lights are on. All that bright light, 
Lieutenant Greer is the one that fed us that information, and he's also the one that installed that lighting that brightened up the, the headquarters station. Uh, when we was building Station 3, the, a lot of the machines that went in, all the electrical stuff, permanent for hose dryers, that was all Lieutenant Greer. And just like I said, he's, he's not just done it for the city. Uh, he, he's been a firefighter since 98, starting with Hudson. He was a North Carolina Forest Service. He's helped North Carolina, he's helped the county, and now he's helping the city. And like I said, after some personal conflicts, he joined the Marines uh, to satisfy the dreams he had to fulfill his self uh, prophecy for that. And uh, so he's helped this nation as well. And, and we are so thankful for the community. He helps his wife do a softball coaching with 12 U girls. So he not only mentors our future firemen, he's also mentoring uh, some, some young ones. And I can personally speak on mentoring. Uh, I was in the pilot program for the college's emergency preparedness technology program, and I was having a little trouble with math. Lieutenant's one that tutored me in my math and actually in my placement skills, placed me higher than the class I actually needed. So it's all around for, for Lieutenant Greer, and we are thankful to have him at the fire department. We almost lost him to Charlotte, but we was able to hang on to him, and we are grateful that he is still here and grateful for the job that he does daily. So um, I'm glad that he's received this award. He is one of the ones most honored to get this and, and, and should get it. And we are just uh, gracious to have him. And again, thank you, uh, Commander, and for your service to our country. Lieutenant, would you like to speak? Uh, <laughs> You're welcome to. I just want to thank the American Legion for this honor. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Chief, thank you guys, and thank Lieutenant Greer, thank you. Uh, I have to know you when you were a lot younger and you played some ball in those days and uh, watched you grow up, and we're uh, proud to, of what you have done and what you've accomplished in your life. Thank you for being a vital part of our city and uh, part of our fire department and uh, all that you do. We really do appreciate it. Well-deserved, and we thank you again. Appreciate you being here tonight. Chief, thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. But we got another one to do, so thank you. Well, you give your right aid. Well, you know everybody from when they were born. I believe you lying somewhere. I'm old, I told you that. <laughs> yeah, he played uh, Little League. Oh, yeah, and basketball. All his Greer boys. Yeah. I, I got to coach his brother, the youngest. Is he Steve and those girls Greer? Steve uh, no, Greer? No, he's a David. He's got, he's from college. College, yeah. Wes Caldwell. He's got four Gentlemen, we're glad to have you back again. Now that we'll recognize our police officer of the year. So yes. welcome again. So again, uh, our post commander, Wayne Mihalik, is going to make the presentation to the chief, and the chief will make the presentation to uh, uh, Chris Meyer, mayor. Welcome, Chief. <laughs> Mayor, Council. On, on behalf of the American Legion Post 29 here in Lenore, it's our honor to present this for uh, Chris Mayer, uh, to note him as the 2020 City of Lenore uh, Police Officer of the Year, presented by the uh, American Legion Post 29. And we will also be putting his name forward, as we will with the firefighter also, to uh, the department level, state level, and see how he works there. Okay. So thank you very much. Commander. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Chris, step forward. <coughs> On behalf of the American Legion, uh, congratulations. Thanks, sir. Well deserved. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor and Council, real quickly, I, I just want to, uh, every year when, when the Legion uh, reaches out to us and we, we look at, we've got a building full of men and women that work really hard and we're proud of all of them. Uh, at times it's tough to, to select one every year. Uh, this year we, we chose uh, Chris Mayer. Um, due to an event that occurred on June the 11th of 2019, last year. Uh, and I'll just read the write-up that was written by one of our lieutenants. During a body camera review, Chris never came forward and, and told us anything about this event, uh, but when the supervisor was reviewing body camera footage, he observed it and saw it and, uh, and, and thought it was a great example of uh, 
one of our officers going above and beyond. Uh, on June 11, 2019, uh, Chris responded to a call concerning a domestic disturbance involving an assault. Um, he located uh, the individuals in a vehicle and the male subject uh, was subsequently arrested. Uh, the female and her children uh, were in the car uh, with no gas and they had no money. Uh, the female was crying and was telling her story uh, to Chris. Uh, Chris told her uh, to follow him to the gas station uh, just up the road uh, and, and he would purchase her some gas so she could take the kids to daycare and to the doctor. Um, he, he followed her there, he put gas in her car um, on his own, and uh, we feel like this act, uh, a lot of times officers do these types of things and they go unnoticed, um, but this was an example of him going above and beyond the call of duty uh, in spending his money and buying, buying this female gas uh, in that time. Uh, and so the police department is honored and fortunate uh, to have Officer Chris Mayer on our team. Um, his sympathetic concern for the citizens he encounters displays a positive reflection on our police department and our city as a whole. And so we're, we're very honored. Uh, I get calls probably monthly. I know of four I've had in the last year um, where somebody has called and bragged on Officer Mayer uh, for his interactions, his professionalism, and uh, I told him maybe within the last week that uh, we were going to have to figure out how to get him to help teach some of our young guys some of that professionalism and whatever he's doing is working. And, uh, and so we are proud of him, and, uh, and thank you for the honor. Officer, Officer Mayor, would you like to say anything? You're welcome to. Thank you. Okay. Let's get a picture up here and we'll, we'll stand back here. Yeah, please do. Right about here. Right there. Right here. I smile. Smile big. <laughs> <laughs> Officer Mayor, would, would you introduce your wife and daughter to us? Uh, this is my wife, Kristen. Kristen, well. This is my daughter, Alba. Hey, Alba. Hey, Alba. <laughs> and I would like to thank Kristen for her support, too, because I know that there's no way that you'd be able to do the job that he needs to do each and every day to, to help out this community and out your support, and especially having a uh, young young lady here with us too, because uh, it's the reality is the family that makes this happen. So thank you very much also. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Commander and uh, Irv, thank you all for being with us again. You're very we welcome. appreciate the program. It's a, a great honor. We're, we're honored to be a part of that. Thank you for this is se several years that we've done this, and we appreciate that uh, that you do. Thank you. We look forward to it. Okay, we'll move on to our on our agenda. We do not have matters scheduled for public hearing this evening. So we'll move to our consent agenda items, which consist of minutes of the city council meeting of Tuesday, July 21st, 2020. Item B is an amendment to the code of ordinances. We held the public hearing on Tuesday, July 21st, uh, 2020 to consider an amendment to the code of ordinances for traffic. Appendix B, section 101.A. This is on street parking only in designated spaces. Uh, note a decision was deferred from our 20, July 21st meeting because of uh, we were meeting in a remote 
situation and per uh, remote meeting statutes, you have to wait uh, a couple weeks before you can actually uh, pass that. So this is now on our consent agenda. And item C is the FY 2019 tax collector settlement and the FY 2020 tax collection charge report. This is pursuant to North Carolina General Statutes 105-373, subsection A, subsection 1, uh, subsection 3. Staff recommends approval of the FY 2019 tax collector settlement report and the FY 2020 tax collection charge as recommended by city staff. So those are your items on the consent agenda. I uh, will open it up to present any question, discussion, or and then entertain a motion when you're ready. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Oh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to uh, make a motion to accept the consent agenda, agenda items A, B, and C as presented. Uh, Council Member Stevens makes a recommendation to uh, approve items A, B, and C on the consent agenda as presented. There's no other discussion. I'll call for the question. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you, sir. And that stands unanimously this evening. So we, we appreciate that. Okay. We'll move on then to request and petitions of any citizens. I think tonight, uh, Mr. Knup. And, yes, sir. Yeah. We have uh, Mr. Rocky Knup, who lives at 412 Swanson Drive in Lenore, has requested to address the city council regarding unified recycling within the city limits of Lenore. Welcome, Mr. Knup. Thank you, sir. Yes, Thank sir. you all for your time and uh, allow me to present here. So today I'm wanting to speak about the recycling pickup proposal, um, unified, um, so that everybody, much like the new trash bins that we have, um, most or all residents would have something similar um, as well. Can I? Thank you, if you hit the space bar. Okay, yeah, I just wanna, okay. So we have some facts right here. Um, I'm not gonna bore you with uh, reading those off, but these came from the EPA website and um, just shows you how uh, important recycling really is and can be for everybody. Um, I think that has, it's very beneficial for the community, has a lot of economical uh, benefits and uh, obviously the environment first and foremost. So currently a recycling program in Lenore, we're encouraged to go to the recycling center uh, located on Penton Avenue um, for all the recycling needs with the exception of household hazardous goods such as your batteries, bulbs, such as that nature, special uh, pickups necessary for that. Um, and if, you, if the residents would like to have their own pickups at their house, they would need to contract through Simply Green and um, pay monthly or quarterly. So I think here's a few of the shortcomings of the current programs uh, that we have is that most families and residents in this city um, are very busy. They have families and that doesn't really allow them adequate time to drop off during the uh, hours in which the recycling center has. Um, some residents don't have adequate transportation, so that limits the amount of people that are allowed to uh, take it to these places and recycle effectively. And you know, you can contract Simply Green, however, that is a, that's a, a extra cost, and as we all know, the cost of living is going up and that is not very sustainable for most families around here. So I think the three shortcomings above here are kind of adding up to a greater problem, which is the indifference of recycling. You know, most people think, well, I can take it down the road, but I have a family to, to um, take care of and, and I have a busy schedule, so it limits me. So most people are gonna say, well, I have a small amount of recycling, so why don't I just throw it in the trash? And unfortunately, that's a widespread problem. Uh, one person says that and says, well, nobody else is doing it. However, that's probably a common problem throughout the city. So in the environmental impact is that our landfills and the places in which we take our trash are gonna be constantly overflowing with recyclables because of the lack of recycling uh, sustainably in, uh, in this city for the residents. Um, and by being more and more recyclables in the landfills, we're not saving valuable energy and resources um, to provide factories and places around here uh, for virgin materials because they're using so many virgin materials, these plastics, um, glass, stuff of that nature, tin, um, 
And that would ultimately reduce our carbon emissions if we are able to possibly uh, effectively recycle. Um, and then also, I think that until we have a viable option where maybe it's free recycling or a taxed recycling program in which residents can take the recycling to, their, to the end of their road and uh, have it picked up much like our trash, it's not gonna go anywhere. Um, so, you know, I think that our residents need to learn first and foremost how to reduce their amount of recycling, reuse their recycling, and then ultimately recycle. I'm not saying that recycling is our end-all, be-all. However, uh, there's, we need to learn this cycle here that we have. So I think that is a very good point. Um, so going green and pushing forward, I'm a former resident of Concord, North Carolina. And so I've seen the kind of a, um, a stepping stone in which they took. Uh, they had a third party pickup with recycling. They were using little totes in which you would put out to the end of your road and they would pick up on a weekly basis. However, that wasn't necessarily the most economical for the city and for the residents for taxation purposes. So they went to a bi-weekly, much like, um, well, they went to a bi-weekly and that allowed for people to accumulate more recyclables and uh, less need for uh, trucks to come and pick them up in the first place. So they use a third party, like I had said, um, and maybe we could model after them. Maybe we could have something that's sustainable for our residents, taxation-wise, and um, could possibly give uh, more jobs to people that are needing jobs in this city, uh, recycling-wise. Uh, much like the trash employees, or the people who pick up our trash are employed by the, the city. So another chance for jobs and kind of going forward with a green option for the city. I understand that this would be a big option and a big thing to consider. However, I think that the next step forwards for both our environment, our community, and our, the, the economy around here are definitely gonna benefit from this. Um, not only our generation, but further generations that come. And it's going to get us into this cycle of understanding that our environment is important and with us not understanding this complete process, it's not gonna be as viable for our later generations to, be, to thrive effectively. So I just wanna thank you guys. I wanna keep it short, but thank you all for uh, listening to me and taking time out of your day. Um, I thank you very much. And here's my contact information if you'd like to see that. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, we certainly sir. appreciate you. Uh, coming to present this to us. I know that you have had some communication with our public works director, Jerry Wright, and have been talking about this. And obviously this is something the city has discussed and had uh, at one time a number of things that we were looking at into that. So something we are always considering and looking at. So thank you, we'll, we'll take this under consideration and have more discussion about it. So yeah, thank, thank you, you for being with us. Thank yes, you everybody. Thank you. Appreciate thank you. It. Have a good one. Good evening. Good evening. If you would, when you come, just give us your name and address so that we can record it for our minutes, if you don't mind. Okay, uh, Jeffrey Bryant, 259 Sullivan Avenue, Hudson. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the commander of the Sons of Confederate Veterans Camp here, Brigadier General James Johnston Pettigrew, Camp 1401. Okay. And uh, we're, we're we've heard things about our monument. Uh, we're very concerned about it with all the monuments that's been t unfortunately taken down and uh, defamed. And uh, we're just, you know, like to uh, voice our opinion on it uh, and let you know that it was put up to honor the young men that went to war. Was so when they were barely young enough to to leave town, some 1,100 to 1,500 young men many of which didn't come back, or when they come back, they were maimed, lost arms, legs, eyes, what have you. Uh, and that monument was placed to honor their memory. My great-great-grandfather, he was lucky enough to come back from the war. And he uh, helped Major Harper, I'm sure everybody knows who GWF Harper is, helped him place the 
the time capsule in the original base of the monument. And the monument's been there since June 3rd, 1910, and uh, 110 years. Uh, I haven't looked at it as any, anything other than to honor those, those young men. And um, I've read a lot of the, the uh, letters. These young men just suffered terribly. I mean, whether it was from actual battlefield wounds, which were horrific, or the diseases that they, they uh, had. It was just, when they, they were in camp, the diseases spread like wildfire and they died from it. My, my great-great-grandfather's cousin actually died in Raleigh in 1862 from uh, a disease. And uh, these men went through some of the most horrible things that you can uh, can possibly imagine. If you've seen the photos of men laying on the battlefield blown in half by cannonballs that's lost their arms, legs, what have you, and just, just mangled. And I, I consider those men that went to war nothing more than the heroes. They, they didn't want to go, no wars, no wars good. This one was more tragic because it was America, Americans against Americans, and just 620 some thousand died, most from disease, others from these horrific wounds. And uh, we just honor those for what they did on the battlefield when they were called to go serve their their country. They they did that, just like uh, anyone from Vietnam, World War Two, World War One. It's just no different. And they, the, the, the monument to those men are up. Then, I, you know, I, it's my opinion that this one should remain. It just, just as how important it is to the history of uh, Lenore and Caldwell County. I mean, the, there's bad things about the war that should have never happened, I agree. And, uh, but to t take the monuments down and try to erase history is just, just not right. I mean, you're kind of erasing those those very people that died for you know defending our homeland. They were just trying to defend their homeland. It's kind of just like erasing them from existence, like they had never been born. And uh, I think that's pretty much the gist of uh, what I got to say. Okay. And I appreciate you taking time to listen to me. Thank you very much. We uh, appreciate thank you. You being with us this evening. Thank you. Have thank a good you. evening. Thank you all. Yes, sir. Is that it? Okay, thank you. All right, that was uh, for a request and petition of any citizens, and we have heard those. I don't think there's anyone online that would, uh, or on the Zoom, that would have any comments to make. Okay, we'll move on then to, uh, we do not have reports of our boards and commissions this evening, so we'll move on to the report and recommendations of our city manager, Mr. Hildebrand. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Council, you have, uh Tonight, just a couple items for information. The uh, City County Service Committee will conduct an electronic meeting on Monday, August 10th at noon. Uh, the Caldwell County Economic Development Commission will conduct an electronic meeting on Tuesday, August 11th at 8 a.m. The Lenore Business Advisory Board will conduct an electronic meeting on Thursday, August 13th at 6 p.m. And the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board will conduct an electronic meeting on Monday, August 17th at 6 p.m. And that's the meetings I have uh, so far to date for your information. Uh, tonight, there's two items for your consideration. Uh, one's a street naming. Uh, this is off Jacob Lane. Uh, staff recommends four private streets located off Jacob Lane. Uh, previously approved expansion of R&D Manufactured Home Park. Uh, the four suggested names are Harrow Lane, Haystack Lane, Plow Lane, and Furrow Lane. Uh, these street names uh, proposed for the park have been verified by the plan department, and they seem to meet all the conventions of the uh, street naming process we have. Okay. And I think Ms. Wheelock is on the uh, call as well, and she, her department um, has processed this application. Okay. And any uh, discussion or questions from anybody of the council uh, here or, or any questions of Jenny or Wheelock, our planning director? Okay. You've heard the recommendation then that we, uh, and we can do that tonight. Yeah. Yeah, well, the staff is recommending that these four private streets located off of Jacob Lane 
uh, for the previously approved expansion of R&D manufactured home park be named as follows, Harrow Lane, Haystack Lane, Plow Lane, and Furrow Lane as presented. And I will ask if there's no other discussion, the council will call for a question on that and a motion. I make a motion we approve as presented. I have a motion from Council Member Willis that we approve the uh, street naming as presented for these four streets. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed. Aye. No, no, thank you. He's on the aye side. <laughs> that was an aye, not a, not opposed. <laughs> I didn't give you enough time, did I? Sorry. <laughs> I know it. I, I've, I'll, I'll give you a few minutes next time. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Hildebrand. Uh, the next item is uh, asking council to call for a public hearing on Tuesday, August 18th to consider the city code of ordinances, uh, chapter 12-1, uh, designation of nuisances. And this is regarding the raccoons and other disease vector species. Uh, basically, the proposed changes will expand on existing uh, nuisance declarations in the, in the code and also clarify the intent of the ordinance to apply to all nuisance species, including rabies of vector species. Now all you're doing is calling for public hearing for the next meeting. We're just calling for public, okay. All right, is there any uh, questions about uh, the presentation there of this at this point in time? Basically, we're just calling so, for a public is hearing. Is this for the whole city or this one particular resident? That whole city. Okay. Whole city. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, then we need a motion to uh, 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 call for public hearing on this. That would be at the August 18th, August 18th, August 18th meeting to be considered. Okay, I have a motion from Council Member Perkins to call for the public hearing to be presented on uh, Tuesday, August 18th, concerning the city's code of ordinances, chapter 12 1 designation of nuances. Uh, no other discussion. I'll call for the question. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And all opposed. Thank you. Carries unanimously. Appreciate that. Anything else, Mr. That's all I have. Okay. Uh, we'll move on then to uh, a report and recommendations. Our city attorney, Mr. Rohr, anything? No, thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. All right, we will move then to uh, reports and recommendations uh, from the mayor's office. And I do have uh, some appointments and reappointments to present to you tonight. Uh, that I'd like to um, bring up. The uh, first will be the reappointments to these certain boards that these have already been serving and would like to continue their service and have all done a great job for the Lenore Business Advisory Board, Mr. Patrick Longano. Uh, Patrick's done a great job of being a part of that. To the uh, Planning Board and the Board of Adjustments, uh, Lucy McCarl. Lucy is the chairman of the Planning Board and does a great job and also serves, as you know, the Planning Board also serves uh, as the representatives to the Board of Adjustments, so they are appointed to, to both of those. Uh, on the Lenore Housing Authority, uh, uh, Reverend Charlie Rivens uh, is a reappointment to that. And we do have a couple coming off of those boards. Uh, Mr. Richard Hedrick will be retiring off the planning board. Uh, Richard has served well over 20 years on our planning board. He's been a great member. Uh, we will miss him, but we will uh, obviously want to do something special for him and when we can, and we'll work on that. But uh, Richard decided it's time now to step down and uh, spend some time maybe with Dot. He better anyway, or he'd be in trouble. And then Mr. Ron Smith is retiring off of the Lenore Housing Authority Board. Uh, Ron has been the chairman uh, of that board, and uh, uh, he will be uh, stepping down uh, away from that. And then I have a couple of new uh, board uh, appointments that I'd like for you to consider as we move into that. For the uh, planning board, board, Mr. it's not Ken, it's Kent Greer. Kent is uh, a businessman here in Lenore and uh, past president of the uh, Caldwell Rotary Club, very active in the community, and he uh, has uh, submitted it. He would like to be a part of our planning board. To the Lenore Business Advisory Board, I have two I uh, would like to recommend. Uh, Mr. Darren McKinney. Darren is the owner of the uh, Shaken Dog in downtown Lenore, one of our local uh, establishments in our in business, and uh, Darren is uh, very involved in our community. And Mr. Gonzalo Vasquez. Uh, uh, Gonzalo is the owner of the Tumbleweeds uh, uh, Steakhouse uh, out on off of 321, former owner of the uh, Dos Amigos and several other restaurants. But Gonzalo has had a really great interest and uh, would like to uh, consider him for our business advisory board. And to the Lenore Housing Authority, uh, Mr. John Francis. John is the executive director of the uh, 
Helping Hands Clinic here in Lenore does a great job with that. And John, uh, this kind of really fall, felt fits in place with a lot of things that they already do. So we'd like to make that recommendation uh, to you tonight. All these would be presented uh, for your consideration and we would uh, vote on those at our August uh, 18th meeting. So I'll present that to you tonight. Thank you for your consideration of this uh, at this time. So, and also, uh, uh, I'll bring this up, a report and recommendation of any of our council members. Anyone have anything? Mr. Uh, Willis? Yeah, real, real quick, just wanted to thank um, the mayor for showing up today. We had uh, the, the Education Foundation hosted um, uh, charter communications. We put an invite out to all of our local uh, internet providers about uh, they offer uh, services to um, free and reduced lunch kids, uh, households in the city of Lenore and throughout Caldwell County. And we wanted to highlight that. So um, uh, they had an event and they, they came. We invited all the providers to come and they kind of took the bulls by the horn and ran with them, gave, a, gave away some free gifts in conjunction with uh, the food giveaways they do with the families through the school system. At, they did it at Valmeda School today. So I really appreciate that. We had um, Senator Daniel's wife come and some school board's member as well. Mm -hmm. So um, really appreciate that and, and wanted just to let people know um, that with school coming up and the getting ready to get started, the city of Lenore has been a, a big advocate of promoting um, internet and connectivity throughout. Our downtown has got Wi-Fi, our, our public recs services have the Wi-Fi. The school system and the Ed Foundation have done provided the buses around. Um, that's a hot topic, a, a big issue, and um, just wanted to let everybody know how proud I am of the city for kind of stepping up and and being a part of that and um, thank you for for being there we're more than welcome and thank you for the partnership that we have not only with our school system but uh, uh, with with your organization that you're involved with and uh, uh, I know you guys are doing a great job I know everybody's trying to figure out this uh, process right now and uh, as I was out there today a lot of families were coming through oh yeah getting getting food and it's great to see that I know a lot a lot of these kids that's the only way they're fed and uh, so anyway I know school's gonna be tough this year but, oh, yeah. uh, hopefully we'll uh, all our people will, will figure it out and do what is the best situation for everyone and keep everyone safe so uh, we, and we will be praying for that I can tell you that very yeah. very much pa so. patience everybody just needs to be patient yeah very much any other council members have anything that they'd like to bring before us tonight if not I think we stand adjourned.